I decided to go to my local health food store, buy a jar of sauerkraut. That's the only thing I knew about fermented foods and um, started eating it just like right out of the jar. I took a bite and it just like lit up my whole body. Like I just felt everything come to life because I was dying. Well, Lauren Monez, you are very welcome to the Happy Habit podcast. Lauren is the CEO of Fermenting Fairy at fermentingfairy.com. And on that website, it states that she believes fervently in the healing power of plants. And we'll hear much more about that throughout the course of this interview. But first, though, Lauren, can you first take us back to your own health issues, which first prompted your interest in plants and all things fermented? Sure. Yeah. Um, I would say that a very pivotal moment in my life, in my health journey was um, about eight years ago when I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And um, I wasn't like your typical patient. I wasn't this, the obvious sick person. I didn't look sick. I was actually racing triathlons back then. And um doing a lot of them and doing a lot of training. And so, you know, I'd wake up at four in the morning and go for a very long bike ride, you know, maybe like 60 miles or something, come back, work a full day um, as an occupational therapist. Then I'd come home and I'd either run or swim. It was just, I was very, very active and very, very fit. And at the same time, my health was slowly declining um, and all the doctors that I went to see just chalked it up to overtraining, you know, not getting enough nutrients because I'm, I'm working out so much. And it got to the point where I was losing so much weight and, um, my heart, I, I just, I, I, this is so clear to me. And this was like eight years ago when, I lived in Santa Monica, California, and just to get into my little bungalow where I lived was just one step, right? I just had to go up one step and I was so malnourished that just taking that one step to get into my house, I had to sit down because my heart felt like it was about to explode out of my chest. Um, and yeah, it was, I was, I was sick, you know, I was sick. I was going to the bathroom multiple times a day, up to 15, 20 times a day, having diarrhea. Everything I ate uh, never stayed in me for more than five minutes. So how could my body really like absorb anything? So um, yeah, I was, I was, I was really malnourished. And so finally I succumbed to getting a colonoscopy and sure enough, got that diagnosis. And I had no idea. I had no idea what Crohn's was. I hadn't, I, I was never sick, you know, I was never really a sick person. Um, so that really embarked like a, a journey of what is Crohn's? Why is it happening to me? And how can I not go the typical route of very intense medication and uh, surgery and in and out of hospitals. This is what I was told that I was just going to be a, a very sick person and I would need to be on heavy steroids and immune suppressors for the rest of my life. And um, yeah, I, I just didn't, that didn't sit well with me. So <laughs> the, as, as the story goes, I found a little, um, I don't know if you know this book, it's the Autoimmune Protocol by Sarah Ballantine. So it's like a um, massive book, maybe 400, 500 pages. And in it, and as I'm flipping through it, trying to heal my body naturally, I was on medication. I did end up taking the medication, but I knew that I wanted to couple it with some more natural ways of healing. But in this massive book was a little paragraph that said, uh, fermented foods might be helpful for autoimmune diseases, which Crohn's is put into that box of autoimmune disease. So I decided to go to my local health food store, buy a jar of sauerkraut. That's the only thing I knew about fermented foods and um, 
started eating it just like right out of the jar. I took a bite and it just like lit up my whole body. Like I just felt everything come to life because I was dying on the, it quite literally, like I had moments in that, you know, as I was getting sicker and sicker where I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. Um, and from this bite of sauerkraut, it just like brought me back to life for a minute. And it was, it's almost like a Kundalini awakening. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's like this surge of energy, like, whoa, what was that? So I tried it again and like it didn't work the second time, but um, that then I was like, what is this? What is sauerkraut? I didn't know what it was. What's in it? What is it doing to my body? And so I started studying gut health and fermented foods and microbes and bacteria and how like I've been raised my entire life fearing the microbial world fearing back to, because my dad's a doctor my sister's a, i mean i'm i'm come from a family of western medicine doctors and so wash your hands constantly everything sprayed down like sanitized completely to the max so here i am like eating bacteria and it's helping me and it's making me thrive so it was just like a, a complete paradigm shift. And as I continued to eat the sauerkraut every day, my stool started to form and I began to go to the bathroom less and less. And, um, and it was, that was it. I started making my own sauerkraut. I started making my own kefir, uh, really go diving deep into the fermented food world and, and realizing, wow, like, I have been so afraid of the microbial world and yet they're here for me and they're healing me. I got off all my medication and that's been my my journey ever since. It must be like winning the lottery whenever you have been bedeviled by an illness, a debilitating illness for so long. And then you happen upon a simple jar of sauerkraut in your local supermarket and then start to consume it. And as a result, you experience all of these transformative effects on your health. That must feel quite extraordinary. It was extraordinary. It was, it was you know, and I, I always think of that moment as like, this is my dharma, you know, my dharma is because that doesn't happen to everyone, right? I'm, I'm sure you can eat a bite of sauerkraut and you wouldn't get that like feeling. Some people do, but for me, it was this aha moment where I was like, I didn't know that a year later I would have a company, but I paid attention enough that the steps led me to then developing fermenting fairy and then like healing thousands and thousands of other people who were sick like me. So it really was like such a pivotal moment that um, I'm so happy that I paid attention to it because I could have missed it. I could have been like, oh, whatever, you know, put it back in the fridge, never touch it again. But yeah. You told a great story, if you could retell it for us here, about Captain Cook and his relationship with sauerkraut. Can you tell us that? Yeah. So, um, you know, sauerkraut is it's an ancient food form like it's um, back in the day, like Captain Cook and all the sailors, they because they didn't have like a lot of nutrient dense foods on the boat that they would be sailing across the world for years um but they would take fermented cabbage which we call sauerkraut now they 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 didn't call it that back then but it was a fermented cabbage um that is very very high in vitamin c and so his he and and they found this out because captain cook's vessel was the only vessel that returned with actually alive men because most men would die off at sea because they were lacking the vitamin C and they got scurvy. Um, so because Captain Cook had like vessels and vessels of fermented cabbage and that's what his men were eating, um, he returned, I mean, some of his men died, but he returned with the most amount of alive men because of the sauerkraut. Uh, it's very high in vitamin C and what happens like a, a head of cabbage when you eat it raw, 
that those vitamins and those minerals that are basically locked into the head of cabbage, um, it's hard for the body to disentangle it from the fiber and from the other things that are involved in, in, in some of the oxalates and some of the, you know, some of the, the, um, the, uh, the other things that like the other properties of a raw head of cabbage, but when you ferment it, all of that is broken down the fiber, you know, everything's broken down into that cabbage and the vitamin C and all the other vitamins and minerals are released. And that's why um, sauerkraut is so high in vitamin C. It's one of the highest forms of food in, in vitamin C um, right. because it's fermented and it's released. It's more bioavailable to the body. Can we go back to bacteria? Because bacteria is at the heart of this story. When we talk about gut bacteria, we're talking about the microbiome. Now, can you tell us exactly what the microbiome is? And then can you detail for us how your own microbiome was positively affected whenever you started to consume fermented foods like sauerkraut? And this was after you had been given your Crohn's diagnosis. Yeah, so microbiome... Um we have many microbiomes throughout the body. In fact, every organ has its own microbiome. So we are 99% microbial life, you know, the other 1% or, I mean, that, that percentage varies, but depending on who you talk to, but we're much less human than we are microbes. So, which, um, can, which can shock people when they hear that, but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's really, it's really true. Like, because we can't see them, but they are everywhere. I mean, we're just, if we could shine a light and just have, I mean, we would be all microbes, which is fascinating. And every part of our, like the breast, the lungs, all the different parts of our body, the, the vagina, the anus, uh, has its own microbiome, which basically means, um, a community of microbiota, which basically means like the, the bacteria, the fungi, the yeast, you know, all the microbes that make up that family of, um, of community. It's a community of, 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 uh, microbiota. And so the large intestine is the most prolific microbiome in the body. Um, it has the most di diversity, the most microbial diversity out of anything. So if you take like vaginal flora, um, you're going to have like one or two strains. But if you take the the flora in the large intestine, you're going to you're going to have like thousands and thousands of different strains. So you want the biodiversity there. Um, you might not want it in other microbiomes in the body. But the key to the large intestine microbiome is as much biodiversity as per as possible. Bacterial diversity, I believe, is key here. You refer to the different strains of gut bacteria as soldiers. So if you have a diverse range of soldiers, you're better placed to counter a diverse range of invading pathogens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also I also talk about how it's um they're like little workers, you know, I, I like to picture them as like little Pac-Men, you know, like these little Pac-Men that they, they're there to work. They have jobs and every, like even candida, people are so afraid of candida, but candida is supposed to be in our gut. Um, and it has a very specific job. Every it's, it's a, a healthy gut is a symbiotic community. So in symbiotic means that they're all working together. Everything is in harmony. And that's what you want. You want a gut where um, they're all keeping each other in check. You know, there's like a hierarchy and they're all keeping each other so that the certain numbers don't outnumber the other ones. And it's just, they know what they're doing. You know, they know how to create a symbiotic community without our interference. So um, that's really important to keep in mind when when you're healing yourself, because so many times I think um, people try to intervene so much, you know, especially with killing off things like antibiotics, even natural antibiotics. 
you know, like colloidal silver or uh, olive leaf extract, you know, things like that, that are natural, um, but they still kill some microbes and it, it will bring the microbiome into uh, an unhealthy state. So the way I view health and the way I view healing your gut is to not kill anything, but to merely support your body um, so that the microbes themselves can basically bring themselves into a symbiotic community. Whenever you started to treat yourself and heal yourself with fermented foods, you saw an improvement in your Crohn's condition. But I'm curious as to whether you saw an improvement elsewhere in your health. Yeah, I mean, for sure, like everything, um, because the gut is the foundation, you know. So as I was healing my gut, um, and this is an important aspect of when um, people get diagnosed with a certain disease like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, which are both IBD, um, they're told that it's an autoimmune disease, right? Or, um, you know, you're diagnosed with some kind of autoimmune disease. And so the normal protocol for autoimmune disease is to suppress the immune system because your immune system is overreacting. So let's, if we suppress it, then you won't have symptoms, right? Well, I figured out early on by myself, no one told me this, but I figured out early on that that does, it just doesn't make sense because I need my immune system. If I have an infection, if I have inflammation, I need my immune system. Why am I going to suppress it? So I started asking those questions like, is Crohn's really an autoimmune disease? And what really is autoimmune disease? Is it something that's truly wrong with the immune system? Or is it um, something that's happening from the gut that's creating a response from the immune system? And that's in fact, what I believe Crohn's is. I, I, don't, I don't truly believe that the body is ever attacking itself. I don't believe in autoimmunity. Um, I believe that if you heal the leakiness in your gut, the leaky gut, and um, the lack of diversity, then your immune system doesn't have to act up, you know? But if you have leaky gut and you have these foreign objects that aren't supposed to be moving into the bloodstream, um, then, you know, your immune system doesn't have to really be active, you know, until it encounters a foreign object. And then it's like, whoa, what's going on here? And then it does its thing. It mounts an immune response and uh, an inflammatory response. And then you have inflammation and then people treat inflammation, but that's not, inflammation is a symptom. It's not a root cause. So what's causing the inflammation? Leaky gut, loss of biodiversity pretty much for everything you can you can trace it back to that well you certainly became convinced by the transformative power and healing power of consuming fermented foods because you went on to set up your own company selling fermented food products called fermenting fairy now can you talk to us about your thought process here <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, we've been in business for we're starting our seventh year right now. And um, I was I got very sick. It, it And I just want to say that, like the road to where I'm at right now, I would say the first year to two years was not easy. When I got off my medication, it was not a, it was not pretty like it was not like balloons and whistles and unicorns and stuff like that. It was very, very tough, very tough. Like there were days where I wasn't sure if I was going to, you know, come back tomorrow. So, um, I just, I want to make that clear that it is, um, it might not be that choice for everyone, you know, if, if they have that kind of grit to stick through it. But, um, I ended up, within that year or so of getting off my medication of becoming septic from my appendix bursting. And I went on disability from the hospital where I was working. And uh, so I had to take about one to two months to heal 
And um, within those one to two months, I started getting better and better, but I was still on disability and I was fermenting at the same time. And I went to get my business license. That was it. I, I woke up one m- morning at like three in the morning and came up with the the title fermenting fairy and i knew right away that was my sign to start a business and that was it i went to a farmer's market and i got into some of the you know huge like really awesome grocery stores in la and it just took off from there and now we're in florida and we're doing like all online business um really niche uh products very unique like we have people order them from all around the world um because we really are the only ones doing certain things. So uh, yeah, there's very special products. Well, on your website, you have a variety of fermented products. You have different packages to treat different things. Uh, One that made me smile was the constipation elimination package. And there's a gut diversity power pack and lots more besides. Plus, all of the ingredients are organic and they are natural too. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. We have the highest quality products. Um, everything. We're not certified organic anymore. We used to be. Post COVID, it just didn't make sense financially for us. But that didn't change anything that we did. We we still buy certified organic ingredients. So our cabbage, carrots, everything, coconut. Um, we make everything in house. So we make our coconut milk from scratch. Uh, we juice our own lemons. We're not buying lemons laced with citric acid. You know, we want everything pure. Um, we don't want any like stabilizers or fillers um, because, you know, when I was making my own products to heal my body, I couldn't handle any of the fake stuff. Um, so of course, like now that I'm fully healed, like I'm not, I'm not going to put in crappy stuff. Like m- my products are going to be the highest, they are the highest because they're healing people, you know, and I can't put that gross, like fake food (laughs) in my products. And they Uh, they come, a lot of fermented foods are, you know, a lot of fermented foods are made in like, they either skip, they're not like truly fermented. And sometimes they're just made with like really cheap ingredients. Now, all these products come as drinks. I'm curious as to whether you consume them in one sitting or do you space them out over a day or several days? Um, So my kefir, you can take about two to four to six ounces a day. So it's just like a little bit, maybe like a few swigs. It's very powerful, my kefir. Um, My lemonade, you can, it's like a kombucha. You can drink it all in one sitting or you can split it up. Um, but we also have food, we have sauerkraut, we have fermented carrots, um, we have fermented applesauce and fermented pear sauce. So, um, and that you just need like a couple of tablespoons with that. So a little goes a long way. Um, it's very, very powerful stuff. So even children, they can just take like a little tiny bite and they're good for the day. It sounds like an awful lot of work putting all these products together if they're made in house awful lot of work. I mean, it's a lot of work, but if you look at the price tag, you know, this is where, like, this is why you're paying $22 for a bottle of kefir because we're paying my team, which is what I used to do. I used to do everything by myself. Now I have a team, but we're paying them to do all this. So the labor is very, very intense. And if you've ever made sauerkraut, it's a lot of time that goes into it and a lot of muscle. It's a lot of labor. So it's a labor of love. A lot of um, fermented food companies don't make it like they just end up quitting after a couple of years because it is so much like so much work. But um, it's just like I can't. This is this is it. Like my products are helping so many, so many people. So we're here to stay. And, and do people get in touch with you then with testimonies about their own recoveries? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We hear I get emails, I get reviews, I get DMs on Instagram. Yeah. Every day, every day. It's amazing. I had a woman a long time ago. This one really stands out to me because it was so similar to my journey who um, she couldn't she couldn't work because 
it would take her hours to get out of the house because she was going to the bathroom so much in the morning, you know, so that she couldn't leave until like 11 a.m. And when she left, she needed to know where there was a bathroom at all times. Very similar to my journey, very similar to a lot of people who have had Crohn's ulcerative colitis or even any kind of gut issue. And she just had one bottle of my kefir and was able to leave her house like at like eight or nine the next morning. And she's just been like an amazing customer ever since that. Um, and there's just stories, stories upon stories like this. Uh, something so simple, you know, and it's just like, it's been around for centuries. And, you know, a lot of cultures use it medicinally. They've been using like Eastern European, I maybe Ireland even, but every culture has some staple of fermented food that they use medicinally. And the U.S. is is kind of hopping on that boat right now. Well, certainly here in Ireland in recent years, we've had an influx of people from Eastern European countries like Lithuania, Latvia and Poland. And with them, they have brought a love of fermented foods. When you go into any of the Eastern European supermarkets here in Ireland, you can see jars and jars of fermented food products. So really, you're not reinventing the wheel here. All you're doing is reintroducing to people as something that has been in existence for thousands of years. Yes, 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 exactly. And we we continue to do it the traditional way. So it's we do the wild fermentation, which basically means we don't add any starter. So a lot of companies to quicken the process, they'll take like a package of freeze dried probiotics um, and dump it into the sauerkraut, dump it into the kefir, whatever they're making dump it into the kombucha. And then you have this kind of foreign community of probiotics that come to life because of the sugar. So then they start eating the food and then you, you start, you kickstart the fermentation process. Um, but back in the day when, you know, great, great grandmother was fermenting her cabbage, she didn't have starters, right? She just used her hand. She used the naturally occurring microbes that were on the head of cabbage already and created a fermentation vessel. Um, that's what we do. We still, we continue that wild fermentation process. And to me, that's really the only way to do fermentation. But, you know, in the modern day, like companies have to, you know, they got to do it quick. So, but, uh, but ours are really made like the traditional way. We're all familiar with the terms prebiotics and probiotics, especially when we're given uh, antibiotics by our doctor. Uh, now, what are your thoughts in relation to consumption of fermented food products uh, whenever you're on antibiotics, for example, in order to help bolster and maintain your good bacteria in your gut? Yes, yes, absolutely. So you want to take it uh, a two hours either before or after your medication. Um, for sure, like, uh, take it while you're on the antibiotics again, two hours before or after and take it multiple times a day. And then I, I usually recommend six months after, let's say you're on the antibiotics for a week, six months after your, I mean, if you don't want to take it daily for the rest of your life, that's really what I recommend. You should be taking fermented foods every day for the rest of your life. But if it's, you know, if you're using it in a medicinal way to bring your microbiome back to life, then it needs to be really six months after that stint of antibiotics, because studies have shown that it could wipe out your gut for a good six months to even sometimes a couple of years. Um, people struggle, you know, these antibiotics, they're not... Um, a light thing, you know, to introduce to the body. Um, it takes people years sometimes to recover from that. But yeah, you definitely want to get on some kefir, some sauerkraut, and maybe like a little bit of both every day while you're on the antibiotics and after. What I love about the concept of consuming fermented foods is that we're going back to nature. It is entirely 100% natural. The very opposite of the message that we get every day from, from pharmaceutical companies that we take 
a pill and that our health issues will be solved. When I was in America a few years ago, I was horrified as to the numbers of adverts from pharmaceutical companies pitching their products to viewers on television. We don't have that in Ireland, thankfully. Oh, you're so lucky. You're very, very lucky. It's, it is, um, it's so, it is so ingrained in us. I don't know, like in other areas of the world, but because we, we have billboards, we have, I mean, everywhere we look, there's a medication to fix something. It's just the body. Like when we have symptoms, it's the body is just, it's just, just a messenger, you know, it's a messenger. And so let's, 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 let's dig in, you know, let's be a scavenger hunt and, and like find out what's going on and, and become more intimate with who we are, because that's really what sickness and illness is, is telling us. It needs a little bit more intimacy with our body, you know, less of the outside world and more tuning in and, and finding what, what nurtures us and what uh, nourishes us. You know, and and listening to our gut, isn't that it? <laughs> listening to our gut. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Because we, all the answers are right here, right in the gut. <laughs> Tell me this: uh, How is your health now? Is Crohn's disease in the rearview mirror for you now at this stage? Oh yeah, I don't even. It's gone. That's some endorsement anyway for fermented foods. Let me give your <laughs> website again, fermentingfairy.com for all of the details and all of your products are on there too. Uh, Lauren, so great to talk to you today all the way from Florida. Thank you so much for joining me on the Happy Habit Podcast. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for reaching out to me. I appreciate it.